The war is on, but are you prepared for battle? All across the seven mountains of influence, which include family, religion, education, media, entertainment, business, and government, we're feeling a great shaking occur. As believers, we need to be wise to the schemes of the enemy and the lies he's trying to sell us. Now is not the time to cower. Now is the time to stand on guard. Today, I want you to hear the keynote message from my new book, Fight Like Heaven, A Cultural Guide to Living on Guard. Let's go there now. We're to fight like heaven. There are mountains of influence that control the world around us. There's spheres of life. These uh, spheres are government, politics, economy and business, health, medicine, education, media, entertainment, religion, and family. And all of these are challenges. You know, when you climb a mountain, how many of you have ever climbed a mountain, right? You like mountains? How many of you like oceans best? All right, how many of you like mountains best? Okay, it's about 50-50. I like them both, depending on the weather, right? And so climbing a mountain takes strength. It takes energy. But when you get to the top, you get to see from that standpoint, right? Well, God has given you the kingdom. And you should be able to see what's going on in the land. You should be able to see what your father's wanting in this time and what you're called to do. So these areas, the enemy has brought all kinds of lies, derision, and problems, and confusion in. And so the mountains of influence are converging in this hour for the end of times. Yes, we're there. I'll show you. And you're needed to influence them for eternity. God put you here in this season for this time, for such a time as this. Amen? You are called. And a culture cannot fall into ruin unless God's people refuse to engage it. Now, we can refuse by being afraid. We can refuse by refusing to look at it. Or we can be so busy and preoccupied with ourselves or other things that we're not seeing what's going on. But someone has a plan. And as I began to study for this book, it was picked out by the publisher. And then when I brought it to them, they said, well, Drenda, we know Satan's working, but we don't want you to use the names of who he's using, the organizations he's using, nor do we want you to talk about anything doctrinally that other people in the body of Christ may not agree with, like faith, amen? And so we got we to gotta decide where we're going to stand with things, right? And I prayed about it in the early wee hours of the morning. I heard the word lukewarm. I'll spew it out of my mouth. And I thought, wait, the reason we're in some of these messes, the reason the enemy's invaded these areas of culture is because the church hasn't been talking about it. We've been focused on religion, but we've not been focused. And you know, Pastor Gary teaches wonderfully about business and economics and going into that area because there's two areas, I'll tell you, really big areas. Well, there's actually three I can think of. One of them is money. The devil doesn't want us to talk about it in church, doesn't want you to have any, and doesn't want you to use that as influence. Okay, the other area is government. Because he knows if he can control the government, he can actually gag freedom of religion and free speech. And if he can do that, there is no freedom, right? We've been through many countries and ministered in nations that do not have freedom. We've known ministers that have been in prison for five years just for proclaiming the gospel. And so we've got to be wise to the enemy's schemes. He wants to take us out, and he does it by stealing our freedom. It's important. It's for freedom that Christ came. The Bible says, do not be uh, yoked or entangled with the yoke of slavery. Satan is behind slavery. He's the tyrant. He's the manipulator. He's the propagandist. He went to the garden, and he got Adam and Eve off by using propaganda. Did God really say? And there's propaganda going on right now. We've got to guard our families. We've got to guard our hearts. We've got to guard the truth, because it's the truth that sets people free. So a culture can't fall into ruin unless the people of God refuse to engage it. I want to show you a scheme of the enemy. It's set up in the World Economic Forum, and I think we need to know this in the church, because it says in the Bible, do not be ignorant of Satan's schemes. Now, that doesn't mean we're afraid of Satan's schemes, but we need to know our enemy, and we need to know the lies he's using to hurt people's lives. So this group is called the World Economic Forum. It was started as the European Management Forum in 1971. These lies have been propagated for a while. The enemy's been laying this plot, laying this snare, laying this trap for people to step into to bring down the governments of the world, to bring our freedom to a place of slavery and totalitarian 
control. That's what Satan's always after. Amen? He did it in the garden. He's doing it today. This group included a thousand leading companies in the world to demonstrate entrepreneurship in the global interest. These are companies like Amazon, Dell Technologies, Google, BlackRock, GE, Intel, Meta, Microsoft, Johnson and Johnson, Pfizer, PayPal, UBS, and Visa. These are economic mountains, and the yearly this group of people meets in a place called Davos, Switzerland. Switzerland. They call it Davos, and they come together with all these global leaders, and they decide and plan our lives. Do you ever hear much about it? No, you really don't. And in the COVID pandemic, the WEF through Schwab said, to achieve a better outcome, the world must act jointly and swiftly to revamp all aspects of our societies and economies from education to social contracts and working conditions. Every country from the U.S. to China must participate. Every industry from oil and gas to tech must be transformed. We must build entirely new foundations for our economic and social systems. God would not have you and I to be ignorant of the, the schemes of the enemy. Schwab has referred to this as the Great Reset, the fourth industrial revolution, a new world order. We have all kinds of politicians that have talked about a new world order. George Bush talked about it. Recently, Biden talked about it. They're talking about the coming of a new world order. And yet, most of our news, we don't hear these things, right? Everybody's too busy watching Johnny Depp and Amber in their divorce thing, right? Which means absolutely nothing to your life, to the world, to what's going on in the nation. We do not need to let all these fake people with fake news you dangle a carrot over here and get us all watching that while they come and bring a reset into our nation. This is serious. Have you heard about much of this on the news? No, they don't want you to hear about it. They've got too busy. You're too busy. All of them are pushing these other things. And this, what, this is what news agencies are doing. Schwab has referred to this as the New World Order, Great Reset, Fourth Threat Industrial Revolution. He said this, you will own nothing and be happy. The WEF's twisted plan for a great reset, which includes transhumanism, is articulated through his right-hand man, WEF advisor, Yuval Noah Harari. I had, him on, I had a, a clip on Drenda on guard about this. Some of you may have seen it if you have it. And uh, Robin Bullock gave a very strong prophetic word at that time. Anyway, what is Yuval Noah Harari? Who is he? Well, let's just say Schwab, Zuckerberg, Bill Gates, Harvard, Stanford, and New York Times have revered him and described him as the prophet. Harari speaks at Harvard, Stanford, TED, and Times Talks. Let's hear what he boasts, because I want you to hear it from his own words. I don't want you to go, some conspiracy theory. No, this is the advisor to the World Economic Forum. Check out uh, Dr. Harari. Science is replacing evolution by natural selection with evolution by intelligent design. Not the intelligent design of some god above the clouds, but our intelligent design and the intelligent design of our clouds, the IBM cloud, the Microsoft cloud, these are the new driving forces of evolution. And if you look at what uh Klaus Schwab, World Economic Forum, the Young Global Leaders. If you look at his advisor, they call the prophet, Dr. Harari. The prophet. Ooh, you look at the things he said, he uses Jesus Christ's name in it. I mean, all this story about Jesus rising from the dead and being the son of God, this is fake news. Wait, that's not true? You don't have any answer in the Bible what to do when humans are no longer useful to the economy. You need completely new ideologies, completely new religions, and they are likely to emerge from Silicon Valley or from Bangalore and not from uh, uh, the Middle East. And they are likely to, pro to give people visions based on technology. Everything that the old religions promised, uh, happiness and justice and even eternal life, but here on earth with the help of technology, and not after death with the help of some supernatural being. And I think that fake news have been with us for thousands of years. Um, just think of the Bible. But, there's, <laughs> but, but there is... 
Yeah, and you we don't, don't need a savior. We don't need, and that there's uh, all these is issues about, uh, uh, you know, there, we, 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 we don't look to some God in the cloud. We look to the cloud where the technology, we get our answers. Blasphemy. I don't know. What do you think of this? This is the advisor to the World Economic Forum that wants to set a great reset for you. You need to know this. We need to know this. I know these aren't like fun things to talk about, but we need to know. And the WEF recruited a group of leaders called Global Leaders for Tomorrow in 1993. They changed the name then. These are the familiar names of today's politics, government heads, 1,400 alumni, Vladimir Putin, Bill Gates, Justin Trudeau, Angela Merkel, President Emmanuel Macron, Governor Gavin Newsom, Tony Blair, Prime Minister Jacinda Ardern, and a whole host of others that are in media and television journalists like George Stephanopoulos, uh, actors like Leonardo DiCaprio, Mark Zuckerberg, Sheryl Sandberg, Marissa Mayer, Sergey Brin, Larry Page from Google, Peter Thiel of PayPal, Pierre Amadar of eBay, Jimmy Wells of Wikipedia, Eric Schmidt, a former Google CEO and the chair of the National Security Commission on Artificial Intelligence. That should make us all feel really good that this person's over AI, right? Jeff Bezos from Amazon, Jack Ma of Alibaba, Alexander Soros, the son of George Soros, who's donated over 32 billion to do away with borders. David de Rothschild. These are people that are at the World Economic Forum they're members of this. They're pushing these agendas. And so many things you've seen over the last years, you're like, what's going on? Oh, this is that. And we're told on the news what we're looking at, but it's not what you think it is. In the last two decades, we've seen their alliance tread into every area of life to dominate the world stage. They've stepped into every sphere of influence. Citizens and believers sit back in dismay as they see our rights being taken. They see our uh, bodily autonomy decisions being made, health decisions, children's education, doctors being told they can't use certain protocols or they can't treat their patients or they can't even speak about it. Censored on social media, censored on YouTube, all the censorship because you have to control the narrative. There's only two kingdoms. This is coming from Satan. Amen. This is nothing new under the sun. And that's why the church must engage it. We're not talking about politics. We're talking about the government that governs you, what you live under, the freedom of speech that you have. People gave their blood. People died on the battlefield. People have pay, paid a dear price for our freedom. We're a free nation. We have a, we have a constitution and we're a republic, the only one in the world that has what we have. And that's why God has prospered this nation. But there are forces to divide us so they can conquer us. They want to divide. Jesus said a house divided cannot stand. If you look across the culture, Satan has tried to divide us, male and female. He's tried to divide us by ethnicities. He's tried to divide us by social class warfare. He's creating division and making us turn against our own nation and against God because he wants to bring down this country. The church is the answer. Amen. We're supposed to answer this call. This is a time we are called to speak truth to the lies. There are a lot of Christians who would tell you, a lot of leaders, a lot of pastors that would tell you, don't talk about certain things. In many ways, the church at large has been outwitted by Satan. We don't want to be silent about these things. We want to speak up. It takes courage. It takes boldness. But if we don't address and expose the deeds of darkness, then they take over. We must counter it. We must yep. know our enemy. We must know our adversary. And we must know what his tactics are. We cannot be complacent anymore. You have influence. God has placed you in a sphere of influence. You are a soldier of the light. We need to be straightforward with the truth. Help us to be strong, God. Help us to do our part, Father, to be disciplined, to be ready, to be soldiers of light, soldiers of truth. God, help us to be on guard. watching this video. 
and I've started a new YouTube channel. It's called Drenda on Guard. Come over there and check out all the things we're doing there where we declare a war on sadness and have a conversation about information that's happening in your life. Go to Drenda on Guard and I'd love to talk to you there.